Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah nahmaduhu subhanahu wa ta'ala wa nasta'inuhu 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 wa Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'ah uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman uh, Yang bahagia uh, Baik negara Malaysia, Sistem Baguna Adnan Zailani Muhammad Zahid Yang berbahagia Dr. Firas Saad the World Bank Group Country Manager for Malaysia, East Asia and Pacific, Yang Bahagia Insight President and CEO, Dato Professor Dr. Azmi Umar, Yang Bahagia Professor Dr. Muhammad Hakkaran Laldin, International Sharia Research Academy for Islamic Finance Executive Director, Dear Distinguished Guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Islamic social finance tools have been instrumental in the alleviation of poverty and social economic development for over 1,400 years. Some of these instruments have been adopted and applied even outside the Islamic world. One instrument in particular, WAP or endowment has been utilized even at the establishment of the Oxford University's Merton College in 2064, as was alerted last month. Without diving into the argument of whether the existence of work predated the modern concept of trust or not, allow me to quote Imam Shafi'i, may the mercy of Allah be upon him, when he says that the concept of work was not known to the Jahiliya or the pre-Islamic era. But Waqf, a brainchild of Islam. Certainly, Waqf in Islam is the result of revelation. When Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab came to the Prophet and said, I have acquired wealth that is precious to me more than any other wealth I have. How do you advise me to spend it? The Prophet, with peace and blessing be upon him, said, If you like, you tie up the origin as in a nilobo and give up as fisabidillah. If you like, you tie up the origin as in a nilobo and give up as fisabidillah the fruits. The overall content of this hadith had remained the indelible source of rulings of wealth till the judgment day, setting the principle that guides the terms and conditions of a wealth farmer. The companions of the Prophet had refused to allow Sayyidina Umar to leave them behind in doing this unprecedented Islamic charitable deed. They flourish Medina with waqf to the degree described by Jabir bin Abdullah as follows. I do not know any companion of the Prophet that had something to give as waqf except he did so. It's important in the general social economic affairs led to the transformation of trusteeship. Previously, its founder used to be the waqf trustee or his appointee. This basic structure later transformed to state intervention through the Sharia court judges throughout the Umayyah and the Abbasid Caliphates. And later such intervention transformed to having a specific chamber named as Chamber of Alkaf in the Ottoman era and now under the ministry or the modern ministry of Rizalatul Alkaf. 
the ministry of Al Qaeda. Throughout the Islamic history, Waqf had provided free education that produced great scholars from Al Azhar University in Egypt, which I am one of the graduates and proud of it. University of Zaytuna in Tunisia and University of Qurawin in Morocco. To mention but few, Ottoman history had had it that it was possible for a person to be born in Waqf home, fed with Waqf property and educated by Waqf school. They collected their rural income from different regions and channeled them into the town economy redistributing it through the food and material purchases for the fulfillment of charitable services and for the upkeep of work building as well as through salaries of their employees work provided employment for skilled and unskilled people in the labor market that was history that was how Wakaf developed into its form today. And I believe it is dynamic that it will grow and develop. And that is why we have this report by the World Bank and the discussion that we had today. Today, despite the widespread presence of Wakaf institution and the significant strides in Wakaf property management and development, what faces a number of issues and challenges. I agree that uh, Wakaf must not only be seen as a religious, a religious duty or obligation. I personally, in the new policy, in the Ministry of Religious Affairs, which Wakaf comes under it, has integrated the whole Makassid value system into the Sustainable Development Goals which we believe is a very great contribution to the world today. And uh, Wakaf, Zakat, is actually a great, a great uh, contribution to the development of the global the, the, the SDG, Sustainable Development Goals. I, for once, never occurred in my mind that we should segmentize Islam from the bigger development issues. I always under belief that Islam must come together in a contributive factor and a complementary factor rather than competing with the system. And that is another challenge. Today, when we see the grow of Wakaf, Issues such as, uh, among these are the need to create public awareness and acceptance. That is very important. To create comprehensive and enabling regulatory frameworks, as we mentioned a few times by the speaker. And you know, in Malaysia, we, 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 we practice federalism. We have the federal law and we have the state law. We have Schedule 9, where there are lists of state or the state jurisdiction. One of it is the Islamic administration. And Wakaf comes under the Islamic administration. As a minister at the federal level, one of its challenges is how do we uniform, or the word use, harmonize all these laws in the state so that it doesn't contradict with one another in order to provide the growth of the work of industry. I'll give you one example which is taking place now in the parliament. There is the act of uh, the profession of the uh, Sharia lawyers as they have in the bar council here. I presented the new law or the new act named as Akta Guaman uh, Akta Profession Guaman Shari, which only can be implemented if it was passed in the parliament, which we have another day Monday to, to debate it today, 
only in wilaya Pusutuan, that is under my jurisdiction, on the federal territory. But what I am trying to uh, assert here is that with this law enacted in the federal territory, we hope that the state can emulate. The state can take example, as we have given the best model of the law. And of course, it is a challenge, ladies and gentlemen, in Malaysia, because the monarchs, or the king, the sultan, and Raja Raja Melayu is the head of religious affairs. And it's only through their approval, agreement, and consent that the law or the enactment in the state shall be passed. There's another challenge of how we can uh, interact with a clear roadmap to get them involved and make the, they feel that this is good for them. And most important thing, it will benefit the whole ecosystem of uh, the Sharia law. That same thinking can be applied here in the Wakaf Institute. As we are now at the federal level, together with our uh, law department in Jakim, is now developing new law that is called the Akta Wakaf. And this Akta Wakaf, if can be successfully implemented, then it can also be a benchmark to the rest of the state. When new challenges pressure the Wakaf institution to look things on a, a different approach, not just handling it, but if it was to be made as a financial tools, then there's going to be another big problem which the law needs to find all these things. Then there will be another challenges. Alhamdulillah, as a Minister of Religious Affairs, I'm ready to take the challenges. Because it is very clear. It is very clear that the world now is moving to a very rapid change of how we do things. It's an issue of blockchain. And you're coming to the cashless society. All this must come under the framework on how Wakaf can put itself in this new technology, in this new platform. And it has proven in history, as I have, uh, have said, mentioned earlier, how Wakaf played a very important role in education. How Wakaf played a very important role in establishing the need of those who are underprivileged. And you are talking about the policy that we have today. There is the compassionate state that we are moving on towards, or the Nagara Rahma. These are all under this philosophy where Wakaf is no more an exclusive instrument, but it is an instrument that provides compassionate practices to all, not just the Muslim, but also to the non-Muslim. And this will be a great contribution to the world, especially in the Sustainable Development Goals of United Nations by 2013 where I believe very much that all this Islamic instrument should be the contributive factor to achieve SDG 2030. Let's take Zakat for example. We use the word Asnaf. It is actually in the economic terms here, it's actually B40. Short of saying B40, we are still using the word asnaf. So there are a lot of rooms where we can improvise, even to the terminologies. And we understand that in Islam is not an irrevocable musamayat, masabil asma. 
What is to be considered is not the names. But what is the substance that we want to achieve? Al-umur bi maqasidiha. What is the, 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 the greater achievement that we want to fulfill? Rather than arguing whether this is Islamic or not Islamic, whether this is what should be used or that what should not be used and fight over it or sometimes even kill one another to it. Which is wrong. We should be very contributive, we should be very progressive, and we should be very inclusive. And that is why all these instruments were made. So, another critical challenge is the collection of cash wakaf through online platforms. There is still no reg regulatory framework to ensure transparency and integrity of such collection vis-a-vis -vis the stakeholders, as I agree. As we move forward towards this platform, what are the regulations? And you are saying this is Islamic. You are saying this is what of sort of an instrument. And in Malaysia, everything Islamic comes under the, uh, the rule of the, the, the king and also the, the monarch as every state. You see this huge uh, uh, transformation of how we do things uh, is also very important to the Islamic effect that we are heading today. And that is why we are now setting up a special committee of digitalizing and making the whole ecosystem of Islamic affair into this platform into this technology. Uh, I haven't touched anything about the Hajj. Malaysia has the best institution of the Hajj and Freedom Rich Fund institution. We may not handle a bit, but we handle about 30,200 or maybe 40,000 pilgrimage every year. We have an investment body and we also have a lot of activities that comes together under the, the Tabung Haji, yes, our Tabung Haji Fund, or Sunduk Kul Haj. Imagine if the whole system is put under this technology. Imagine how it will grow and how it can turn to be more accountable, more transparent. And as today we are talking about against corruption, Today we are talking about to fight corruption and unfortunately those agencies that are infested by corruption are from the Islamic agencies. I have to say this. Making a name Islam doesn't mean it's all clean. Don't you agree with me? This is the problem. People say when it is Islamic, then there is no corruption. When they are good people, they won't corrupt. They are nice people. But when I took over as a minister, which is the unfortunately, many of the agencies are corrupt. Sadly to say. Sadly to say. But Alhamdulillah. Our will to see Islam as a clean image. Our will to see Islam as it is, not corrupted by such people. We have managed, Alhamdulillah, to solve or to rehabilitate, to restructure Tabung Haji at the cost of the government the cost that the government had to bear for this rehabilitation and all the corrupted officials and the corruption that is taking place, government came in with 17.8 billion ringgit measure to save Tabo. Other institutions, Yasan Pembangunan Ekonomi Islam, Yapil, the Economic Development Institution, our foundation is also now at the verge of disclosing or revealing another yet another corrupt practice in the Islamic agencies. I'm not proud to say this, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not proud. 
I felt bad. By the name of Islam, it's correct. And no one should be proud about it. And no one should brag about it and that, good, I've done this, but as a minister, I have no choice. We want to go forward. Before we can go forward, we have to clean our houses first. Then only we can talk about Islam being the great contribution to the sustainable development goals and other social uh, social <coughs> uh, social purposes. And this is what we are doing, Alhamdulillah. We also have to embrace the digital economy. We also have to embrace the cashless society. This includes facilitation of payments through digital wallets and the possible use of blockchain technology. Some people say my product is halal. Good. And just to share with you, under our department, Jakim, we have the best certification of halal in the world. But then again, it's not about having that certification. But how does the whole ecosystem work within that? How does this technology can come together and develop the halal certification? In our halal certification, uh, we face a lot of challenges. And someone tells you that this is halal product, fine, we look at it as halal, we have our own auditing. But that doesn't mean the way he uh, the way he finance or, uh, or where he finances product is halal. There's another issue there. So we are bringing the whole ecosystem to really tell to the people, look, this is halal ibn halal. As the Arab said, I mean this is pure. No more, you know. But then again, it takes. And I believe your, your discussion today will help us to see things in a more broader uh, picture. With Industrial Revolution 4.0, integrating blockchain into the work of system would go a long way to address the problem of transparency and trust that currently hamper broad-based public participation. I agree with you. You see, when you talk about zakah, or even Wafa through a proper or official channel. Because in Malaysia, you cannot do Zakah or you cannot do Waka unless it is official. Because we, we, are, we are regulated. Waka and Zakat in Malaysia is regulated. You can't just give, say, okay, I want to give Zakat to this, to this. No. It is strong for you to do that. You can be punished. Same thing as Waka. It is all regulated. And each state will have its own regulation in a very simple uh, 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 manner. But uh, if, 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 if a zakat institution like us, for example, uh, Pusat Pungutan Zakat, or Zakat Center Collection of Wilayah Pusatwa under Majlis Agama Islam, the Federal Territory Religious Council, we are collecting about yearly, last year it's 688 million. This year, we are aiming to 700 million. We want to come to maybe 1 billion. Next is 2 billion. I don't know. But what it is, is that we are dealing with the business of trust. People can only give you when they trust you. It's not just about boasting we have 700 million collection. It is about to tell the public where it is being spent how it is being spent and what are the impact and the most important performance that we want is to get this B40 or ASNA out from that circle and our success would be that it is them now who is paying the Zakat. If we have this clear in mind, inshallah, the Zakat collection can be a very effective tool on one of the 17 agenda of the SDG is to eradicate poverty. And this is where we play our role. This is where we play our part. 
Here also we are talking about strong governance. And that's now it was mentioned professionalism. Yes. Again, you see, when you name it as something Islam, people will just ignore professionalism. I don't know why. What the Prophet said in Allah Yuhibu, Ida Amila Hakukum Amalan, and Yutina. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love for those who do something that they should do it or they will do it professionally. That is it means what? At the best of your performance. And that is exactly what professionalism is all about. <coughs> Why is it that when we talk about Islam, it's like something you don't consider any element of professionalism? This is because Islam is that bad that it doesn't need professionalism. See, sometimes even these small, small things need to be addressed to the public. It's high time for all stakeholders to come together to discuss. Thank you for this program. You know, today I cancelled my post cabinet meeting just to be here with all of you because I think it's so important. Ooh. On Friday, during parliament session, we have a cabinet meeting in the morning. We will usually finish at, we start at 9 30, we finish at 1 o'clock and rush to the mosque. Okay. During parliament session, not parliament session, we will do it on Wednesday. And after that, after Salah, we would have our post cabinet under my agency. I want about 14 agencies under me. That we then will discuss in the post cabinet. But because I, I think that my presence today here that talks about what all this was, I have been ambitious to say. So it's important for me to talk to the player, to talk to the researcher, to talk to the academician, to talk to those who have the brain to do so in order for us to achieve this great vision of <laughs> But I will have a long list of agenda next week because I missed this one. So I, I believe it's high time that this uh, to develop and ultimately execute application of contemporary work of instrument that is in line with the spirit and the letter of Sharia. Ladies and gentlemen, with the fatwa of contemporary Sharia scholars that permitted cash walk off, all of us can play a vital role in reviving the walk off institution to its full glory and its new form. More so that the dissenting opinion in this has been relaxed by the OIC Fifth Academy Resolution Number 140 of 2004. Here in Malaysia, many of the state walk off laws are in parallel with this fatwa. For example, the Islamic Walk of Enactment 1999 provides for Walk of Sheikhs. Also in Malacca, Walk of Enactment 2005 and Milan Walk of Enactment 2005 contain a similar provision. While in the realm of Islamic capital market, the Malaysian Securities Commission in 2017 had approved the issuance of the first Walk of Shares by Larkin, by Larkin Central Bahad, an innovative product of Islamic social finance instrument. Work of application in today's dynamic world should be looked in a more holistic way. The application should have a more widespread impactful result as it embeds in the spirit of the Maqasid Sharia and in line with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. In addition, it also is in line with the concept of what we are pursuing for today in the new government that is Rahmatan Lil Alameen or mercy to all mankind, propagated by the government of Malaysia. We, the policymaker, in addition to the establishment of Jauhar, Jauhar is a, is, 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 is a department and agency which uh, coordinates all the issues of Waqaf, Zakat, Hajj, and Umrah. Sorry, Hajj, not Umrah. So this is called Jauhar. Jabatan Wakaf, Haji, Zakat, dan ya, Wakaf, Haji dan Zakat, which collaborates with the State Religious Council. Yes, we do have such platform. Yes, we do have such platform where we coordinate within this compact system. And Alhamdulillah, have given my commitment to all His Royal Highness in each state and especially Yang Ketua Nagol that whatever I do in the name of Islam, the first 
entity that I should refer to are the kings. And I've given these promises. I've been called to explain all my new ideas about Islamic affair and the new policy. Alhamdulillah, all the royals and the kings are very concerned and very responsive to all these ideas. I, show not, uh, I do not see any problem in future if this coordination needs to be done, but there should be a clear roadmap. And as long as we do not take the power of the state, and as long as the king and the sultans give their blessing, I believe what we aspire can be achieved, inshallah. <clears throat> In building such ecosystem, a number of frameworks or guidelines can be made as reference. We do have reference uh, like the Malaysian Labuan International Water Foundation and Bank of Indonesia. We have Indonesia Water Board and Islamic Research and Training Institute, core principle for effective water operation and supervision. This framework or guideline clearly enumerates the roles and responsibilities of the Waqaf trustee and the Waqaf authority, as well as the code of conduct outlining the need for the trustees to act in good faith with prudence and fiduciary care in the best interests of the donors and the beneficiaries. Education and research institutions such as the World Bank, INSEF and ISRA could work with State Religious Council to develop capacity building and enhance the professionalism of the work of workforce. Sharia scholars and IT experts could develop innovative models for work of in line with the advancement of technology. Corporate bodies, meanwhile, should lead the way in contributing towards the funding of work institutions. I would like to congratulate again the World Bank, INSEF and ISRA for coming up together and organizing the roundtable on Wakaf and coming up with the report. I look forward for more such collaborations and I'm honored here to be speaking in front of all of you today. Together we can create an enabling environment for technological innovation to attain the highest level of Wakaf efficiency and presenting this social finance instrument as viable, sustainable funding option for socially beneficial projects, thereby reducing dependency on public funds. And I have just uh, officiated one of our products, that is uh, the, the work up for the university, where we, at the end of the day, want the university to be independent from the government grants. So they will have an independency through the Waqaf uh, institution which Madhya Agama Islam has given the Matawali status to about six or seven universities uh, that has agreement with us. So these are part of our contribution, uh, at least to see education uh, through the tools of Waqaf. It is with great pleasure that I hereby launch the World Bank INSEF ISRA report on maximizing social impact through work of solution. Billahi Kofi Nidara, Salaam Alaikum, Rahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.